All right, we are ready to go for a Wednesday edition of the OFN Today. Mark Lawrence joins me, experts.covers.com. We're going to preview some key games in the NFL and college football. We've got analysis on these games, injury updates, picks, and more. It's November 7th, 2018, and the OFN Today brought to you by rlads.com and covers.com. Covers.com featuring live score, stats, and odds. Considered the most convenient and entertaining source for sports news and facts with over 45 million visits a year. So it's serious time, uh, Mark. Uh, championship odds after the playoffs uh, show Alabama continues to be a heavy favorite. But, you know, Clemson has moved up to 4-1 to one, or down to 4-1. to one. And uh, Michigan has moved up to 8-1, to one, uh, a little bit ahead of Notre Dame. Georgia actually moved down to 12 to 1. And I got to tell you right now, I mean, I know that a lot of people were, uh, especially the pro Alabama people, were very impressed with what Alabama did with LSU. What, 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 I did, what I got out of that game, though, watching that game, was to tell you the truth, as good as Alabama might have looked on the scoreboard, I looked at it a team that's not so invincible. I looked at a team that once you play Clemson, Michigan, Notre Dame, or Georgia, you're going to be in a four-quarter war. Well, I agree with you, Greg. Uh, I think Alabama realizes that uh, if they go up against a top-quality football team, meaning one that has a defense a la LSU, they're going to be in for a war. They're going to be in for a battle. And that will be the case moving forward. Maybe not so much through the balance of their regular SEC portion of their schedule, but it will be when they get into the SEC championship game and the college football playoffs. It will be a horse of a different color. Well, Georgia, I mean, now that Jake Fromm is starting to look more like the quarterback that we thought we would see when the season began, if he continues to play at this level uh, over the next several weeks, uh, especially he's got one more big game this week against Auburn, you know, if he continues to play well and his confidence uh, all of a sudden is riding high heading into the SEC championship game, uh, I still think LSU probably has a little bit better of a defense in Georgia, but LSU's offense is, is really not very good. We, we knew that all along. We knew that if LSU was going to beat Alabama, it was going to be Alabama not playing up to standard on defense uh, and LSU playing you know, a, a really solid offensive game, and they just didn't. I mean, they couldn't do anything against Alabama. Uh, but Georgia can move the football, and that is going to present a little bit more of a problem. And then you, and then if you do beat Georgia and get to the playoffs, like I said, then you've got to possibly face either Michigan or Notre Dame first before you got to face Clemson. Now all of a sudden you got to beat Georgia, Michigan, or Notre Dame, and then Clemson. And at minus three hundred to one to win the championship, you can keep that. <laughs> yes, you can. Uh... <laughs> I think one other aspect that uh, uh, needs to be at least acknowledged is the fact that this Alabama defense is getting better with each game Oh, absolutely. Passing. Agreed. Yes. You know, they're getting closer and closer to the old Alabama defenses that we've seen, uh, which means that we're likely to see uh, a few lower-scoring football games than we have been in the past with Alabama in these routes against these uh, high school opponents that they've played in the past. But, you know, given their due, their defense is really coming around for Alabama at this stage of the season. Two of the last three games they've held opponents to season-low yards uh, and haven't allowed more than 260 yards in any of those three games. All right, now speaking of one of those playoff uh, teams that will most likely be there, and you know what? i got to tell you the truth. I don't even think Clemson has to beat Boston College this week, and I think they'll end up in the playoffs by winning the ACC championship game. But just in case you want to make sure you do win, because, look, if Notre Dame does run the table, if Michigan runs the table the rest of the way, uh, Clemson does not want to put themselves in a, in, in a situation where, uh, let's say, Georgia upsets Alabama, uh, then it's Alabama against Clemson. Uh, then they'd be in a little bit of a, a little bit of trouble. Uh, but uh, Clemson obviously looking pretty good with the point spread being twenty. They've been playing great football lately. You know, offensively, Lawrence is getting more reps. Uh, I mean, the offense again has just been fantastic. But this Boston College team is having. I mean, this is the bet. This might be actually the best Boston College team I think I've ever seen. Because this is not, I mean, they've had some nice teams, Matt Ryan, Doug Flutie. But th this is this has never been a, a program that has been a dangerous, 
uh, you know, a near playoff team, and 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 you know, maybe one one less loss and a completely healthy AJ Dillon all season, it could actually be in that spot against Clemson. But what this is all about is about the ACC. It's about the ACC championship game, and I don't know, twenty points is a lot of points going on the road at BC. Uh, this is this is a little bit different than I think what Clemson has been dealing with lately. It's also at night. I think if Clemson covers this game, I think they cover it late. I'm not saying they won't. I just think they cover it late. Well, I agree with you. I think uh, this is perhaps arguably one of the best Boston College football teams that we've seen come down the pike in a long time. Uh, great running game, you know, whether it's Levy or uh, the Beast running the football, A.J. Dillon. The bottom line is uh, they're a well-balanced offense. Uh, they can run the ball. They can throw the ball. Uh, and I like the fact that their defense is getting stiffer with each passing game. Uh, we talked about Alabama's defense improving. So, too, is Boston College defense improving to the point where even that Westgate Superbook has listed them in their odds to win the college football playoff albeit 1,000 to 1 odds, but the bottom line is at least they're listed these days as they weren't before in the past uh, on this three-game win streak that they come into the contest in. I think the biggest thing that uh, hurdle that Clemson has to overcome here is what we call the noose tightening on this football team. And uh, basically what it amounts to is teams from game 10 on out who are on the road in conference games with an undefeated record, have really struggled in the past. In fact, they've lost 30% of their games moving forward to close out the season. Hmm. So you've got the noose tightening on Clemson here. And I think the other aspect of this is a point that you hit on, and I think it's a good point, that Clemson is not, this is not a mandatory win for Clemson. Uh, I think they're at the stage of their season where they're comfortable enough, much like Alabama was last year, where they can lose a football game and still make it to the college football playoffs. Now, they'll probably have to win the ACC championship to do that. Um, they're not going to get the free pass that Alabama did last maybe year. Maybe not. No, maybe not, but unless things fall apart completely sure. with the other one-loss teams. But, you know, the bottom line is this is not a must-win game for Clemson, and it's certainly a season-maker for Boston College. I think the points – I have to grab the points in this game as well. i, I got to tell you, I, when I look at the, uh, the the remaining teams right now – I actually think it's now down, seriously down, to just five teams. It's the fourth out of there in Georgia. Uh, Ohio State, to me, is, I mean, come on. How many? How much more proof do we need to keep seeing from Ohio State that this is just not a very good Ohio State team this year compared to previous teams? Uh, I don't believe there's any chance in the world that Oklahoma leapfrogs a, a one-loss Alabama or Clemson for the playoff spot. And I, and, I, and I say the same thing for Washington State, West Virginia, or an undefeated Central Florida team. So uh, I, think, I think everything would have to really fall against Alabama or Clemson for them to not make the playoffs. If they lose, uh, either Clemson doesn't even make the ACC championship game or Alabama loses the SEC championship game, I still think it's going to take a lot for either of those teams not to make the playoffs. Well, I agree with you. You know, uh, and, and I think about big portion or a part of that is the cannibalization which can happen in the Big Ten Conference with Michigan. You know, they could uh, they could end up losing at Ohio State. They could. They'll be out. They'll sure. be, they lose it. They're out. Oh, they're and done. Two yeah. losses. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, and if they do lose, Ohio State becomes a one loss team who maybe then goes on to win the Big Ten championship, or even worse, lose the Big Ten championship. The Big Ten's out because yeah. there's nobody in the Big Ten with one loss at that point. So, you know, we're down to the, you know, which one loss team uh, most realistically stands the chance of crashing the party. And uh, you know, there's likely going to be two undefeated teams and a pair of one loss teams. And right now, uh, Notre Dame could be that other, uh, that other undefeated team as well. But yeah. the, the bottom line here is which one loss team is going to end up crashing the party here. And right now, it would probably be Michigan if they went out, because it's where they sit in the polls right oh, yeah, now. Sure. And, if, and if not, if not, the other one-loss team could be either Ohio State or Oklahoma, just depending upon how the cards fall. Yeah, I think the most intriguing uh, way that it could be real interesting is if everybody kept winning except Alabama. And what would they do in that situation if Alabama lost to Georgia and everybody else won their games? What would they do to Alabama? Would they leap? Would they still keep Alabama ahead of Michigan or Notre Dame? Because uh, they wouldn't do a Clemson. But would they do it with me or or what? Or would they keep Alabama out of the playoffs? I mean that that would be the only thing I think that would uh, that, that, that that to me that's the most intriguing thing that that could take place. 
Well, Georgia beats Alabama. We're going to just see Georgia and Alabama in the college football playoffs again this year. Well, then, well uh, Clemson's not going out then if they're undefeated. So no. that means you're going to either eliminate – so that means you're going to eliminate Michigan. That's correct. And just imagine doing that, though. I mean, imagine well, going with two SEC teams and eliminating Michigan, a Big Ten team – on a winning streak since week one with the best Michigan team they've had in like 15 years. Just imagine the outcry if that were to happen. Well, they're going to justify it because of uh, the strength of schedule, Georgia's strength of schedule, beating Alabama, beating the Oh, Georgia's in. No, no, no. This is about Alabama because you can't beat Alabama and knock Georgia out. So Georgia would be in. Absolutely. I mean, that wouldn't even be a debate. That would be between Alabama and Michigan. Well, it would be between Alabama and Michigan. That would be the argument. And then, you know, the bottom line, when the dust settles, you're going to see Alabama, the number four seed again this year, just like they were last year. Uh, The difference being that Alabama made the SEC championship game this year. They didn't even make it last year. Sure. Uh, And look, I'm not saying that I disagree with you. I I could easily see them doing that. Uh, I just think that that, that's why it's the most intriguing uh, scenario. Because if it happens, you would have two programs, Alabama and Michigan, with their fan bases, uh, their history, and, uh, and and the committee would have to knock one of them out. And, and chances are they will knock Michigan out, even though Michigan will have won the Big Ten championship, will have one loss against Notre Dame, an undefeated team in the playoffs, and Alabama's loss is again. And, and really, if you look at their schedule, the, the, their only good loss will be, I mean, the only team that they really will have played, because LSU will have, what, three losses? Will yeah, be LSU, Georgia. Right, yes. And so, so I just think it would be a very inter- – look, I don't want to be in that scenario as a Michigan fan because I, I don't trust the, the committee uh, to, uh, to knock Michigan. Look, I don't think any of that's going to happen, uh, but it is the most intriguing. Okay, so let's go to Virginia Tech and Pittsburgh as we stick in the ACC. And, boy, all of a sudden, the Pitt Panthers, after getting off to a bad start, getting blown out by Penn State, they lost to North Carolina. And they got blown out by Central Florida. So they're starting the season. If you take the Albany win out, they start the season one and three against FBS teams. And here they are uh, sitting in a, in a great situation where they could actually, at five and four overall, they could actually be in the ACC championship game if they can win out. And they're uh, going to be at home against Virginia Tech. And this point spread is only three. And, look, I, I, I don't know how you don't, unless you've got some really good trends to throw my way, I don't know how you don't take Pitt in this situation because Virginia Tech has been playing some pretty bad football lately. And, and, and this is the same team that lost to Old Dominion. Well, you know, for openers here, number one, we're talking about a Pittsburgh football team that, as you just said, is not a very good football team. I mean, they've won their last two games in a row. But prior to that, they weren't even in the thought or the discussion, uh, primarily because they were being outyarded regularly every football game they had played. They'd only beat one team in the yards, one FBS team in the yards, until uh, they pulled the upset uh, against Duke and then the upset against Virginia. This is a football team that, if you go back the last five games, they've been underdogs in all five games. And now they're going to dress up as a favorite here to a team that uh, they've never been a favorite against. Uh, You go back, you look at the history of the series, it's all Virginia Tech as far as favoritism goes. They've never been an underdog to this football team. Uh, And you're also talking about a Virginia Tech football team that really responds in conference games when they're off back-to-back losses. They're 7-1-1 against the spread in this particular role. Uh, you know, I, I, I know Pitt has dominated in the series to the money, but they've been the underdog in the series to the money. Now they're all of a sudden they're being cast in this role of a favorite, and I just don't like it. It smells to me, and as bad or poorly as Virginia Tech has played here in the past, it almost reeks of a Rodney Dangerfield-type situation for Virginia Tech being the underdog in the game. Bottom line to me here is um, I'm not going to get to the game. If I did, I would do Virginia Tech based solely upon the role change in the game. Yeah, I mean, uh, great point. If you take a look at Pitt this year, they've uh, FBS teams have been a favorite once, and they lost to North Carolina. So uh, they're in that role again, and we'll see. I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd still look. I, I think the whole Virginia thing, uh, maybe they were just in a situation. Look, we know Virginia isn't still where Bronco Mendenhall wants that team to be. 
but uh, maybe they just were at a point where they had, you know, they had three three straight wins, and uh, they they just had one of those days where you know they're not going to play great football for a whole month, uh, and and Pitt caught them. Uh, but I still think when it's all said and done, I still think that Virginia Virginia Tech game could be the decider uh, of who takes on uh, Clemson in the championship game. It most likely will be uh, in, in the way it's the way it was supposed to be at the beginning of the football season, at least on the Virginia Tech side of the football field. And uh, you know, while they've been in disarray, Virginia Tech here, uh, their quarterback is all of a sudden he's in the lineup and he's not a backup quarterback anymore. He's sure. their starting quarterback. You know, yeah. He's the guy that they're going to take to the dance with him, if you will. But uh, I just think the wrong team may be favored in this matchup with Boston College. All right, let's go to the AAC for our last college game. Houston, a four-and-a-half point favorite against Temple. They're not in the same division, uh, but uh, Houston needs this one all of a sudden because uh, they, they were feeling pretty good about themselves. They had a couple-game lead on SMU, but then SMU beat them. Uh, now Houston has to make sure they keep winning games or else SMU is going to own that tiebreaker. Uh, so uh, Temple, meanwhile, comes off the, uh, the, the the big game last week at Central Florida, and they were riding high. They, they had a they had nice run going, uh, especially against the spread. But uh, both of those gone after the Central Florida game. Now they got to go back on the road against Houston, and they got to recover this is going to be tough because this is one of the situations where you get a program like Temple that's now pl- playing for pride. Because when you lose the Central Florida game in your division, th- that's it. I mean, you're not going to win the AAC. They know it. Uh, there has to be a little bit of a letdown, you would think, at Temple. Uh, all right, we're trying to play for a better bowl and some pride, but that doesn't that that's not that that, that that's not a good thing you know, for for when you're handicapping games you're looking for you're looking for a team that's like Houston that's trying to make sure that they stave off SMU so they can play in the AAC championship game, and they're only a four and a half point favorite coming off a loss, so uh, I, I probably would go with Houston in this spot. Well, I'll be against you in this spot in this particular game here, Greg. And okay. uh, you know, for uh, for you know a couple of different reasons. Uh, number one, if you put these two teams on a defensive scale, Temple's going to weigh Houston down. Uh, we've talked about their poor defense for the Houston Cougars in the in the past. Sure, they did it again last week. They allowed SMU 514 yards. SMU hasn't cracked 500 yards in a football game, I believe, since they come back off the death penalty. Uh, but it's the Houston Cougar defense that we're talking about in this football contest here. Uh, the other side of it is you've got, a, uh, I, I think, uh, a major coaching mismatch in Jeff Collins against Major Applewhite, uh, Collins from, from Temple in this football game here. Temple got into a shootout last week against Central Florida, a, a shootout that they really didn't want to have to get into, but it was dictated by the flow of play by Central Florida and that nonstop offense of theirs that never huddles up. Uh, they had no choice, you know, but to take what was being uh, delivered to them, and they come up on the on the wrong side of the football contest. But, you know, that being the exception in the football to their to their season here this year, this Temple defense has been really stout this football season here. Uh, I like the fact that they lost at home, uh, twenty to thirteen, in a really close football game last year, and I say really close, uh, in the sense that they were down twenty to nothing in the game. Temple was. And didn't quit. They come back and outscored them 13 to nothing in the second half of the football game, and had a chance to uh, to go on and win the game, but they didn't. Uh, the bottom line here to me is, I don't know as if Houston is a better football team than uh, Temple is. Temple's knocked off Cincinnati, uh, you know, who's a pretty good football team uh, in their own right this football season. Here, they took care of Maryland as a 16-point dog. They won that game straight up, dominated them in the stats in that game, won by over 200 yards in the contest here. I'm going to grab up the points with Temple. Well, you see, I think, uh, look, I, I agree with you. I actually think Temple's a better football team. What we're going to do is is we're going to go with different philosophies in this game. My philosophy is going to be I don't think Temple's going to be up for the game. And anytime you just gonna, you're going to you're going to go that way like I am in this one, that, that I mean, that's my analysis. That Temple, uh, even though they're a better defensive team, I think maybe they're a better coach team, a better team overall. I just think, like I said, I think that emotionally, I think they're not going to be there. And with Houston definitely needing the win and Temple not needing the win, that's what I'm going to go for in this game. I might be wrong. Uh, that's, that's what I'm going with. 
uh, you're going with uh, just, hey, Temple's a better football team. So uh, that's, uh, I guess we'll find out how, how it works out. All right, let's go uh, to the NFL now. And a big game on Thursday night. One of the best Thursday night games we've seen in a while. Carolina at Pittsburgh. And the Steelers are a four-point favorite in this game. Both teams are playing some great football. Uh, just recently, I added Carolina. Actually, I had Carolina on my futures report. Uh, I put them up there uh, at the beginning of the season. I got them at, uh, what did I get them at? I got Carolina at 40-1 uh, to 1, uh, back on September the 28th. And then just last week, uh, I doubled down on them. They were 20 to 1. Uh, because uh, I, I just, I, look, Cam Newton, uh, you can say what you want about him, but the guy's a good quarterback. And this is a quarterback league. And uh, Ron Rivera does not get a fair shake. There's still a lot of people that don't think he's a good coach. And uh, they're just wrong. I mean, the guy knows how to coach. Uh, he may not look like it, but he just does. And. You throw in a good coach with a good quarterback, and there's some really good players there. Even though Newton's got a banged up offensive line, he's got more. I mean, he's got a ton of skill position players and game breakers that he's never had this much talent to work with before. And I think we're seeing all of that. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, meanwhile, I'm not touching them on my futures because I still don't trust them in the big game in the playoffs. Yeah, they'll probably make the playoffs again. Yeah, they'll probably win the AFC North because the Bengals are a banged-up team right now, and I don't think they can catch them, especially with Pittsburgh beating them in Cincinnati. But when the playoffs come, especially at Pittsburgh, and it's always going to have to go through New England at some point, I don't trust them beating the Patriots anywhere. So uh, I'm staying away from Pittsburgh. But in this matchup, I think I'm going to do the same. Uh, I, I, I'm going with Carolina in this one. Uh, I just, I, I, honestly, I, I think they're a better team. I just really do. I agree with you. I think Carolina, uh, I don't know if they're the better team, but I think they're at least capable of playing with Pittsburgh. You know, he's playing their best football of the season right now. And I think the Panthers are improving as we're speaking right now. The Panther defense is beginning to resemble the Panther defenses of old. Sure. And that's the key to this football team. You know, they play this ferocious defense, which they're capable of doing. They're in just about every football game they can play. Uh, and you're talking about here also uh, in Pittsburgh, uh, they're coming off of, of a big division revenge win like at Baltimore on the road last week. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to get back up and play at that same level this particular week on yeah, good point. short on short notice here, yeah. you know, in a short week. So bottom line to me is we have an ascending team who's the underdog against a football team that may have peaked in their last football game. I'm going to grab up the points with the Panthers with you. All right. In the NFC North, uh, this is a big one, Chicago, uh, two games up on Detroit, and they are in first place, the Bears. They lead the Vikings by a half a game. Vikings are off this week. Uh, Chicago six and a half point favorite in this one against Detroit. And I, look, I don't really know what to expect from Detroit. Sometimes you know, from, from week to week, it's it's just. And this has been going on now for years. I don't know. Uh, maybe they'll get better. I like the foundation they have. Uh, it's going to take another draft, another off season. They've got the, I believe they've got the right quarterback. They're starting to run the ball a little bit more. There's still issues along the offensive line, uh, but again, just a very inconsistent team. Did not look that very good last week at all. Uh, Bears are riding high now. They're they're winning games against weak competition though, and Detroit will be a step up. Uh, but the Bears are at home. Uh, Detroit, the more uh, th they're going to have a little bit of edge as far as the fact they're going to be the more desperate team because they lose this football game and they're probably done and no chance for a playoff spot. Uh, I think this is one of those games that the Bears need to get Khalil Mack back. He's been out the last couple of games. I don't think they've needed him in those games. I think he's going to need him in this one. Uh, I, I this is a tough one, and and because I I'm, I'm always looking for a good upset play, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I grabbed this one as one of those money line plays because it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me at all. I think these these are very evenly matched teams. Uh, Chicago's just playing a little bit better than Detroit right now, but uh, to get somewhere around uh, two to two fifty on the money line, I think it's worth it in this one. Once again, I agree with you in this game, Greg. Here, this is a football game here. In Chicago, everybody's drinking the Bear Kool-Aid these days. Uh, if for no other reason, just because of the fact that they've just beat the New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Come on, man. I know. I know. The New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills. And didn't they beat Tampa Bay recently, too? 
Well, yeah, they beat Tampa Bay before their bye week. Yeah, exactly. There you and, go. and they beat Arizona before uh, that. Arizona. Okay. Oh, jeez, oh, yeah. watch out. Yeah, yeah, but but they couldn't get past Miami. So what or does New it tell England. you? Yeah, well, New England they weren't supposed to, but Miami yeah. they should have. That's true. What does it tell you about this ascending football team? Yeah, they're beating nobodies. Uh, more importantly, they put up forty-one points on hundred and ninety yards of offense last week. That's automatic play against material. That's it's defense. A football Oh, my goodness. It's a football team that uh, lived on turnovers in the yep. game. They had four turnovers go their way. Yep. Uh, you, you, you would love to fade teams like this, especially when they come favored in a football game. And I also love the fact that Matthew Stafford has beat Chicago nine of his last ten games. The guy's 9-1 straight up in his last ten starts against the Bears, yet he's the underdog in this game. I think Detroit's a live dog in this football game. All right, and then we'll wrap up with Atlanta and Cleveland. And uh, I, we're at the point now, uh, even though, look, uh, you got to give them credit. They played pretty good in the first half against the uh, Chiefs, the Browns did. But we're starting to get to that point now where uh, it, it, they're just the same Browns. And, you know, look, they're, they're talent-wise, they're better, uh, but they're in transition. Uh, Greg Williams, unless there's a major turnaround, is not going to be the head coach next year. They're going to probably bring in an entirely new staff. Uh, who knows? Maybe they bring in Lincoln Riley. I wouldn't be shocked. And uh, so right now uh, you got one team in that kind of mode, and you got another team that with all the injuries they sustained early in the season and all the losing, all of a sudden Atlanta's won three straight, I believe it is, right? Yes, and uh, they come up with a big, impressive win, at least at, at Washington, who had been playing some great football. They win the game on the road. And now all of a sudden they're learning to win without those injured players. I don't see the Cleveland Browns as the type of team that could stop that engine. I I can understand where your assessment comes from here. Atlanta's really smoking offensively, at least. Uh, defensively, that might be another argument. They uh, they took care of a of a Washington Redskins football team last week that was just beat up with cluster injuries. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, just yeah, beat up I with, think I like their whole offensive line now, like out. Yeah, for this week's know, game. Yeah, so you know that's also a false sense of security, if you will, for a football team doing that. Uh, who is now on the road for the second consecutive week? Uh, and what I don't like about Atlanta in this football game is their rush defense. It's it's terrible. They allow 4.6 yards a carry, and yet they're coming out here road favorites into this football game against a team that can, has a semblance of a running game. Uh, the, the problem with the Browns this year is their defense has gone completely south in this football team. They were a top 10 ranked defense last year. They're the second worst defense in the league this year. And that's all on Greg Williams. I mean, the, the defensive coordinator who is now the head coach, uh, that has got to be addressed. I would have let him go in, instead of uh, Haley, Todd Haley. Uh, but, you know, you don't know what's going on internally with the football team. There's a, a lot of dissension between Haley and the other coaches and the football staff as well, but his ego gets in the way oftentimes, and so too does Greg Williams. Sure. But the bottom line here is the Cleveland Browns defense has really got to plug some holes here. Uh, they're not allowing their offense enough time to be on the football field to be able to be effective in that particular situation here. But push comes to shove here. I cannot lay the Atlanta Falcons as a favorite in their in their condition that they're in here right now. Turning the matter back to uh, Greg Williams and the Cleveland Browns head coach, you know, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, I know uh, to a fan, a Cleveland Browns fan there, Everybody would be ecstatic if they were to hire Bruce Arians as their head coach, who wants to be a Cleveland Browns head coach. He used to be an offensive coordinator for the Cleveland Browns. The last time they were in the playoffs, he was their offensive coordinator. And Could he survive, blue... though, health-wise? I well, mean, is he getting be better treatment? Uh, is it possible for him to return in the Browns franchise that they would be really sure that he wouldn't have any issues at some point. Oh, game eight, uh, I, I, I got to miss a month because you can't have that in Cleveland. You just can't. No, you can't. And I'm sure there'd be, you know, there'd be health care provisions uh, in a contract and something like that. But, you know, the, from a coaching ability and a oh, coaching Oh, tremendous. Sure. You know, absolutely. And he's a blue-collar guy. With Baker Mayfield, guy. too. Sure. That's a great, exactly. match. great match. A blue-collar yeah. guy in a blue-collar town. Sure. They wrap their arms around him. Yeah. You know, so. And get him out of the booth, too, because that's 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 a concern no, that's for not, us that's viewers. That's not his forte. And no. it, yeah, we don't want that. Yeah. So that's no. good. Get him back on the field, please. Yes. 
All right. I like that. So, uh, yeah, that would be – look, that, it would be great for the sport to have a guy like Arians in Cleveland, like you said, uh, especially with Mayfield. Uh, look, I hope he can get healthy. It's, 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 it's not good because look at Arizona. I mean, it's, it's, look at what's happened since, since uh, things – I mean, look, of course, they, they've had a few changes, especially at quarterback, but he's the biggest change. And, uh, and, and that's what happens. You lose a big-time head coach like Arian. So he, he could do wonders for that, that team. they got talent. they got a rising quarterback. I just hope that he can physically handle it. So. Yeah, I, you know, we hope so, too. And if he can, I think he would be the perfect man. All right. I'll remember you said that. Mark, I appreciate it. And, of course, uh, you've got your website going on over at playbook.com and sportsdata. Dot com and uh, for people that want to check out playbook.com uh, w- uh, easy to navigate very easy to navigate uh, it's real simple uh, just log on to playbook.com you can check out a lot of great handicapping stats information we've got betting tools we've got three of the nation's best leading uh, sports newsletters in the country our football newsletters our totals tip sheet our stat newsletter the midweek alert and our weekly newsletter it's all available online at playbook.com. Mark, appreciate it. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Hey, Greg, have a great week. Thanks you for too. Be good. Bye-bye. Excellent. All right, that's Mark Lawrence. As we was at six games, three in the NFL, three college football in the books. Now, since I wasn't uh, on the air yesterday, we're, we've moved Dave Koken to Friday from covers.com and so we're going to no- see what we've done is we've moved Dave to Tuesdays early in the season to kind of wrap up the weekend but now that we're moving him to Friday this week I'm not sure what we're going to do next next week we'll see I'm, I'm making some changes but this week's changes were unavoidable so uh, that means that we'll have more games to cover with Dave and of course Ted Safransky will be with us tomorrow from covers uh, more college and NFL games Uh, I'm going to lean more towards the NFL side with Teddy tomorrow and that is because we'll have our college football show tomorrow uh, with Mitch Light from Athlon Sports where we're going to go in depth on everything going on in college football so we'll give you a full update on that with the playoff uh, rankings and of course uh, everything else going on in college football from the SEC to the Sun Belt and yes, there's a big game in the Sun Belt on Saturday, Troy and Georgia Southern. So if Georgia Southern can beat Troy, then Georgia Southern uh, is going to end up in the championship game, the inaugural championship game of the Sun Belt. Now, I know they already got a loss, but all they got to do is even things up and have those two head-to-head wins. And of course, they've already beaten App State, so this would uh, wrap it up for Georgia Southern pretty much. I mean, I guess they would have... Of course, they could lose again. I mean, but you look at the schedule at Coastal Carolina, at Georgia State, that's very doubtful that they would lose again. Uh, Troy, meanwhile, does have to go to App State at the end of the season. So if Troy can beat Georgia Southern, now Troy uh, has everything in their control. And they could win that game at App State, run the table, and they would be in the the Sun Belt Championship game. Uh, App State, I guess, still has a shot. Uh, but they need Troy to win and an App State beating Troy at home uh, at the final game of the season. So anyway, those are the type of things we'll talk about on our college football show tomorrow with Mitch Light from Athlon Sports. And again, Teddy and Dave will be with me over the next couple of days to talk more about the NFL and college football. Uh, I haven't been on uh, with, again, being away on a few of the weekends over the past two weeks. And you know what? Thank goodness I haven't had to do any Jet post game shows. But uh, because of that, Jan Levine hasn't been with me for a few weeks, and we didn't talk at all uh, about anything uh, about those two really bad losses. So uh, Jan and I will talk some Jet football uh, later on at 5. And uh, Randy will still be with me on Friday. Uh, Ryan Talbot, who covers the Buffalo Bills, will be with us. We're going to do a later show on Friday afternoon uh, as far as the Jet show. Uh, Dave Koken will be with me first on the OFN today. Then we'll have a Jet show on Friday. So that's coming up Friday. But tomorrow, it's our OFN today with Teddy. And then, of course, our college football show with Mitch uh, as well. So thanks to Mark Lawrence. Uh, I'm Greg DePama. This is the OFN today on the Our Lads Football Radio Network. You know the drill. It's Alpha, Mike, Foxtrot, 